people when they were human beings. So they, they had their moments. They had their moments where things didn't really go like the movies, happily ever after. But when we look back at my father, we look his his and both of them in terms of their uh, valuing the importance of the arts in our lives. We're we're clear on the fact that they made a commitment as parents to make sure that we were exposed to things. Because they saw a world for us beyond the life that they had. And sometimes I get choked up when I talk about this stuff. But I come from a long line of crybabies. My father was a crybaby. My grandfather was a crybaby. My uncle was were all crybabies too. So I collect myself sometimes. But sometimes I'm feel so thankful of the things that I was exposed to and the kind of parents that I had, the kind of support that I had. You know, it wasn't that um, I was so great. I had some talent. But I also had support. I had people who in my church would tell me, you keep it up, you keep doing the right thing. And a lot of times, that's all it takes to push someone further ahead in whatever they're trying to do, to encourage them, even your friends. Even the friends that I had, you know, a lot of times, <laughs> As a uh, young man, teenage years is a tough time because you want to, you want everybody to like you, you want to get along, you want to be cool, and uh, I think a lot about my own life. You know, I I started on violin in the public school, and uh, man, I was taking that instrument home every day. I wasn't really doing anything, and one uh, summer, my my mother had me take a class for the summer on the island. And uh, basically, I stayed on the same lesson for the whole summer. So finally, one lesson I came in, I guess the teacher had just had enough. He said, let me tell you something, son. I know you've been taking the instrument home every day. You haven't done anything with it. Why don't you just hand it in and give somebody else a chance that's really interested and wants to do something? I was, I was crushed. He embarrassed me in front of a couple of my friends. I was ready to quit right there. No problem. I'll, I'll hand it in. You can have it right now. I didn't say that, but that's what I was thinking. But my mother said, look, give it one more year. You're going to middle school. You're going to junior high school. And they have a great music program at Shaw Junior High. That's where I went to middle school. So um, I went to my mother's advice. I didn't quit. I went to Shaw Junior High School and I joined the orchestra. And uh, I was the worst violinist in the orchestra. I sat uh, second violin, last stand. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, the following, the following summer, I, I took a music program and at Sarah Junior High School, and I met some other young players who were better, everybody was better than me. But I was encouraged to want to practice. And when I came back, going into the eighth grade, the conductor went through auditioning all the people in the orchestra. And actually, I was the last one that he heard because I was still sitting last stand and second violin. So, he said, okay, I want you to play the same thing. And I played it. I had a little vibrato going. And I said, man, boy, you, you improved. And I played, he said, let me hear you play it again. And I played it again. He said, come on up. So I was sitting assistant principal second while. And that began to, well, that encouraged me right there. And I knew, I, I started to start to like the violin. And so he put me assistant principal, and then he talked to me after the class. He said, you know, I know you're not taking, you're taking lessons here, but you really need to go to get private lessons. And that's how I ended up at Southern Music School. So I was encouraged by my mother, who, who had me stick with it just one more year. Sometimes you gotta stick with something. Sometimes it's not gonna be always easy. Sometimes, some things come easy, some things you just, uh, I'm 
I'm going to get upset, so not really upset, but sometimes I, I teach now, right? So I'm teaching kids, at, sometimes I've taught kids at five or six years old, and they play better than I did when I was in my teens. But that's, that's great. It doesn't matter where you start or where you start to grow. The, 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 the point is being able to grow and move forward. So in middle school, uh, Dr. Uh, not Dr. But Donald uh, Ewer was my music instructor. He advised me to go to cinema. And I came here, I studied with a brilliant violinist and just a wonderful teacher named Ronald Shapey. And Ronald Shapey was a, 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 a lot of concertizing himself, but he was a great teacher in terms of, he made me fall in love with the violin. We used to play duets in class uh, during my lesson, and I just, you know, he was soft-spoken, and um, he just made me feel very, very, very comfortable. So the next year, I was auditioned, and I got to meet uh, A. Gordonberg, who was the complete opposite of Ronald Shapey. He yelled at his students. All his students were idiots. If you weren't, if you didn't call you an idiot, you better be, you better look out. But if he calls you an idiot, it means you're, you're cool. So I remember I went to my audition. I really didn't have any, I didn't know how to prepare for an audition. I just played whatever I liked. Played the songs that I liked to play, that would play at home. Because at that time, I had a, just like playing. So I got up, I went to him. So, 
in all city we were always doing challenging work so they're supposed to be like the best students out of the school that was in all city. So Dr. Wilson said, look, I want all of you to take the music uh, to your teacher and let him work on some of this music with you so when you come back you'll be better equipped to perform this music. So I took it to Wittenberg and I said, look, um, Dr. Wilson said that um, uh, he liked you to work on some of this music with me. He said, my boy, I don't work on music. If I have to work on music with you, I have to do that with everybody. And I have too many students in the orchestra to work on music that they're doing. So you tell, um, I think it was Mr. Holoshowski that uh, you're not, I'm not going to work with any, any music with you. So me and my big mouth, I went back and told um, Mr. Holoshowski, he said, yeah, uh, you know, my teacher said he's not going to be able to work on uh, that music with me. He has to be Democrat. Democrat? You tell him he's the biggest dictator I know. <laughs> so I didn't think much about it, so I went back and told him. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, next thing I know, Ortenberg had called down to the district and was going to take all his students out of all city. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they, they went to the pops. So uh, they actually made an apology. But, you know, sometimes you didn't know whether he was joking. He, then he talked to me later and he said, yes, I gave them hell, my boy. I told them that they do such and such. I'm taking all my students out of the office room. And by the way, my boy, the next time anybody says anything to me about, I would advise you to kind of keep your mouth shut. <laughs> So there were several, he was one dynamic character. Because I was actually, when I started playing jazz after I was in college, I was actually afraid to tell him that I was playing jazz. Because I, I didn't know if he would try to kill me or what. Because his personality was so bizarre. So I kind of avoided him for a while. But then one day, uh, I talked to him. And he said, I hear you playing jazz. I said, yes. He said, well, I want to hear you. So uh, I went over to this place. I, put, I had my first album as a solo artist. And um, he didn't play in front of me. He, he, he uh, I think it must have played later. But another student, his name, Judy Newman, saw me in park walking. She said, uh, Mr. Woodford loved your CD. And he said he, he said he had a hard time sleeping because he kept listening to it over and over again. So I was really happy about that because I really admired him and I knew that he had, uh, you know, had a lot of great students during that time that, that I knew, like Andrew Zabotinsky, Martha Eagleson, John Eaton. And, uh, you know, I was in decent company. So I can't really um, tell you how much uh, Settlement really influenced my life. And the people that I met here, I connected with even after leaving here and going to West Virginia and graduating and coming back. It was just uh, magnificent. What happened was when I came back to Philly, Settlement School, uh, I met a woman named, that I knew when I was here, named uh, Miss Eagleson. And Ms. Eagleson at the time was head of an organization called Young Audiences. And Young Audiences is an organization that helps present concerts in the schools for young people. 